Lithography, the technology that enables the etching of circuit patterns onto silicon substrates, is essential to the semiconductor industry. The current global geopolitical pressures and sanctions have rendered access to the world's most sophisticated lithography systems impossible for Russia. In response, the nation has implemented a two-pronged approach, investing in electron beam, e-beam lithography, and developing domestic deep ultraviolet, DUV, stepper technology. The objective of this method is to maintain a standard of domestic chip-making capability while simultaneously investigating potential avenues for the production of sub-10 nanometer features. The two strategies are a pragmatic response to sanctions and restricted access to sophisticated equipment, while also emphasizing Russia's endeavors to maintain self-reliance in critical semiconductor technologies. Photolithography that employs light in the deep ultraviolet region of the electromagnetic spectrum, typically at wavelengths of 248 nanometers, KRF lasers, or 193 nanometers, ARF lasers, is referred to as deep ultraviolet lithography. In a process commonly referred to as stepping, DUV stepper systems project patterns from a photomask onto the wafer, sequentially exposing each dye area. However, modern scanners use coordinated motion to sweep the mask and wafer for increased throughput. The widely used lithography technique for legacy and mid-range semiconductor nodes is DUV, which is generally suitable for the production of circuits with feature sizes ranging from 90 to 250 nanometers. While immersion lithography and multiple patterning can be employed to extend DUV technology to smaller nodes, each additional stage introduces complexity, cost, and output limitations. In contrast, extreme ultraviolet EUV lithography employs a 13.5 nanometer wavelength, which enables the single exposure patterning of the most advanced semiconductor nodes at 7 nanometers and below. Reflective rather than transmissive, EUV systems operate in a vacuum, rely on multi-layer mirrors, and necessitate laser-produced plasma sources, rendering them exceedingly intricate and costly. Russia and other sanctioned countries have been unable to mass-produce the most advanced processors due to the strict international control of EUV access. Russia has been investing in electron beam lithography along with its DUV initiatives. E-beam lithography uses a focused electron beam to directly write patterns onto a resist, rather than relying on masks or light. This enables the creation of resolutions that are significantly lower than 10 nanometers, making it a unique tool for the development of specialized circuits, research, and prototyping. The serial nature of E-beam writing makes it unsuitable for mass production. In contrast, a modern EUV machine can expose hundreds of wafers per hour, whereas a single E-beam system may only process a few wafers per day. Nevertheless, E-beam lithography provides Russia with the capacity to manufacture photomasks, small quantities of high-precision chips, and prototypes that can improve the production of DUVs, despite this limitation. In essence, Russia's E-beam research represents a pathway to the production of sub-10 nanometer features, even if the monthly output is restricted to a maximum of tens or hundreds of circuits. A few thousand chips per month may be feasible for smaller dyes or simpler designs when multiple machines operate in parallel. Historical factors have a considerable impact on Russia's approach to lithography. Reverse engineering and isolated domestic initiatives were the main methods by which the USSR developed microelectronics during the Soviet era. The development of lithography was fragmented and never attained global competitiveness, particularly in comparison to Japan, which made significant investments in DUV technology during the 1970s and 1980s. This trend continued with the emergence of ASML in the Netherlands. The semiconductor industry in Russia experienced underinvestment, brain outflow, and a shift toward raw material exports following the collapse of the Soviet Union. In the 2000s, Nikon and Canon of Japan maintained their mid-range lithography expertise, while Taiwan, South Korea, and ultimately China advanced their semiconductor manufacturing. Rather than attempting EUV-scale mass production, 
Russia must now concentrate on DUV and E-beam due to this historical mistake. In the global lithography industry, China occupies a middle ground. SME, a Chinese company, has created DUV machines that are capable of producing chips as small as 28 nanometers or slightly smaller, with the potential for small improvements in the future. China has invested in EUV system research, but its capabilities are far below ASML's. In spite of its loss of global predominance in EUV, Japan continues to offer DUV systems through Nikon and Canon. In contrast, Russia's strategy of prioritizing legacy DUV production and targeted E-beam research is a feasible approach to achieving technological independence, as it has a smaller industrial base and less access to high-precision components. In Russia, the applications of sub-10 nanometer circuits produced through E-beam lithography are specialized rather than commercial. The defense and aerospace sectors could use these chips to enable secure processors for satellites, radar systems, missile guidance, and other command and control electronics. Cryptographic processors, post-quantum encryption devices, and high-performance computing for defense simulations are also feasible applications of high security and scientific computing. E-beam systems also facilitate mask writing, indirectly supporting DUV-based production at finer geometries. The inherent limitations of E-beam throughput align with the fact that these applications do not require bulk production. Russia's sub-10 nanometer processors would severely limit their production volume. Due to the serial nature of E-beam lithography, the production of advanced circuits would be limited to a few tens to hundreds per month for high-complexity designs and potentially a few thousand for smaller or less demanding dyes, even when multiple machines are operated in parallel. Although these quantities are insignificant in comparison to the global production of mass-market CPUs or GPUs, they are strategically significant for defense, aerospace, and scientific applications. In these sectors, the capacity to manufacture a small number of highly specialized processors domestically can have a significant impact. In summary, Russia's lithography program adopts a pragmatic approach despite facing severe constraints. DUV stepper production is localized to preserve mid-range semiconductor capabilities, while concomitant investment in electron beam lithography establishes a path to sub-10 nanometer precision in niche applications. The country is not in competition with ASML, TSMC, or China in high-volume production. Rather, it is establishing a niche in which sovereign capability, prototyping, and strategic applications are more important than throughput. The defense, aerospace, and critical infrastructure sectors are ensured technological independence, despite the limited domestic production of sub-10 nanometer chips. This approach is realistic, technically advanced, and forward-thinking in light of the current geopolitical constraints. If you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. Also, please take our channel membership, which is very affordable, to encourage us.